I've done this all backwards. Yeah, I did this all backwards. Crap. Last video, we got all these milled up, as well as all the material for the base laminated, milled up, and ready to go. This video is going to be about making the top, including these curved joints, which is going to be fun. Okay, you might have noticed that a, uh, th this end was wider on one side than the other. That's because they're not straight line ripped the same. That might have been, that. well, that was my fault when I did the track saw. So I lined up the outer edges, and now I'm going to... Uh, the joiner and these are lining up a lot better. I marked fence and outside so that way when I run these through the jointer it'd be the same as running them together this way. The reason for that is with my old jointer and that fence, that fence isn't even flat so it's impossible for me to get it totally square. So running them that way makes sure that uh, however much my fence is out of square gets canceled out in the glue up so I still end up with a flat top. But uh, this is more of a gap than I want. This is a 16th. If I can get this down to about a 32nd, I'll be happy with that. Okay. And I've got a new number seven from Bench Dog from Rockler. So we're gonna tune this girl up and give her a go. Okay, about ready to glue up. This is a six foot, foot roll and I'm gonna get a six foot uh, table out of this. So the nice thing is I was looking earlier, I can cut out most of this um, rot and still get the uh, length that I need. Last time I pulled out my domino, which was the first time I used it, this is the second time. It didn't do me any favors, but uh, I want to get better with this thing, so I'm going to practice with it. Not that I need to justify myself to the internet. Or maybe I do. I don't know. Do I? you caught that before I did but I uh, made a boo-boo and cut a domino on my end mark which is where I was supposed to end this so now there's a giant hole at the end of the board instead it's not cool um, but fortunately I can just move the end a little bit the problem is if I move it this way I'm getting more of the rot which I was trying to minimize if I go the other way then the end of that board is even narrower. I was trying to split the difference between those two. Probably not the only mistake I'm gonna make on this thing. I realize I may have inadvertently assumed everyone knows what dominoes are for. Anyway, on glue up like this, they don't particularly add much strength. That's very controversial. Some people are gonna tell me in the comments that I'm wrong, and that's okay. Um, but what they really do is help alignment because as you can imagine, I want these both, both surfaces to be as smooth and flat as possible. Otherwise it's gonna result in the need to do a bunch of sanding or whatever, just general flattening because who doesn't want a tabletop that's not flat or who wants a tabletop that's not flat? So these help with that. Um, of course, there's other ways you can achieve that goal. But that's pretty much it. Now I'm gonna shut up and glue this up.
a much better job with my dominoes this time and I can just fill it up there and I barely get snagged on it so that'll send out super quick We're talking a few thousands but here's my end mark where I'm gonna roughly cut it of course I've got to move that now here's my last domino I'm pretty flush here but here I'm not flush there's a little bit of flex in the boards because I'm also flush here. So flushing this up more isn't gonna help me at my end. Then at the other end, it wasn't quite lined up. So see if I can get you to focus. I snuck a F clamp on the end and that pulled it tight, but that's not gonna work down here. Not quite 3 64ths, a little over 30 seconds. That's not okay to me. So we're gonna use the technique you can use if you don't have Domino's biscuits or anything to reach in there and squeeze it and that is calls. These are super simple. Tape prevents the uh, glue from sticking to it. I have a line here marked that's the high point and these have been plain to slip away. So they're kind of arched, if you will. And I'm just gonna use my mark of the high spot right there where I want them to come together and clamp them. Okay, it's being stubborn. I got my call on, but you can see that shadow line. That's a little bit of a gap. It's not pulling out because because the bottom's flat. So what I need to do is trick it to raise this up. So I'm gonna put a shim on the bottom and then clamp it to pull the top flat. Okay, I got a very thin piece of material. Actually, could have gone a lot thinner, but this will still be okay. Okay, see we still got a bit of a gap there. Let's see if we can close it up some. Of course, it already closed quite a bit, but should be able to get some more. A little persuasion. A lot better. You can just barely feel that. Now here's something really controversial. Actually two things. Um, people are gonna tell me I don't have enough glue squeeze out because there's not glue e oozing everywhere. I think that's fine. But when do you scrape it? Some people wipe this wet. What I like to do is see how it's kind of holding together and the outside's a little dry. I think that's the perfect time to scrape it and look how clean that is. If you wait for this to harden, then you scrape it, you're gonna pull up wood fibers with it because glue is harder than wood. Okay, the center book match is glued up. Rip the end so I can get a better sense of how to position these. Now, what I'm noticing is this end is a lot wider than up here. And accordingly, these boards are a lot narrower on this side. This one, not as much, that one for sure. So to try to balance out and have a more equal width, uh, I'm gonna ditch the trying to have the log unfolded with the book match and all the bright sequences. And I'm gonna flip this board, turn it around on that side, swing this one around over here so I can have the wider end where it's narrower, narrower end where it's wider try to balance it out. I think I already said that too many times. Okay, off camera I flipped the boards and did the first step of joining this on a curve. We got PE for homeschool going on outside since everyone's homeschooling, so basketball it sounds like. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I laid out this curve and now I'm just gonna trace it on so I can use that to make the template. I'm going to mark it, cut it out first, then transfer that to the template. Then I can use the template to transfer it to this because of uh, math, geometry, which we'll get into. So, And I didn't want to like nail holes or anything into this because this is going to be my tabletop. So I got a quick clamp here and then spring clamp this piece of uh, eighth inch aluminum. It's eight feet long that I keep just for stuff like this in order to uh, make my curve and it was kind of popping so to set the middle I've got another quick clamp here kind of holding it down and that was uh, steady enough.
cut the slab to the line and then smoothed it. Now I need to transfer that to the template. So I'm gonna mark this so I can rough cut it. Now, you could probably cut out a lot of these steps if you went to one of those kindergartens that taught you how to color in the lines, but I didn't. So uh, it takes me a little more work to, uh, you know, get several things on the same line. Unfortunately, what counts here isn't that anything's lined up, just that the plywood actually overhangs this a little bit because now that it's rough cut, I'm going to use a template bit in my router to follow that up and get these perfectly in line. Well, why jigsaw it? Just so the router has to take off less material. That was stupid. Fix it. Okay, so I got the template how it needs to be in both my pieces that are gonna get joined or rough cut. Why is this so much harder than straight lines? Well, as you know, straight lines are straight, so if you have two straight lines, they join the end, period. It's really easy. <clears throat> Curves are an entirely different story. For curves to match, they have to have the same radius, which is how we measure curves, because a curve is just a section of a circle. And now I take a pencil and it's offset and I trace a bigger circle that then, you know, I just made a bigger circle. It has a different radius, so those curves aren't gonna match. So what we need, we need to do is make two curves that have the exact same radius. Here's how we're gonna achieve that, is with the template. Okay, I've got my two pieces to be joined, the center piece and the outside piece, and my template. And I'm going, now this radius on the template isn't the radius I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut a slightly different one that's the same on both of these. How do I do that? Is with router bushings. So the way to keep track of this is when I run this long and I cut the inside one, I'm gonna be cutting on the near side of the bit, you know, the side of the bit closest to the template. I'm gonna keep things in relatively the same position, slide my template off, and then cut the outside piece. But when I'm doing that, I'll be cutting on the far side of the bit from the template, so the opposite side. What we're gonna do is use bushings that, um, the, the first bushing that we use to cut this whatever size that is, we're gonna use a bushing twice that diameter for cutting this outside, and that'll make sure that the line we cut is the same distance from the edge of this template in both cases, so we're cutting the same radius on both of these. All right, I did the first one. Probably notice there's a little lip left. I'll come back with a flush trim bit and knock that out. But anyway, I've slid my outside piece in and I checked it to make sure my router bit's actually gonna cut. I went from my 3 8 bushing to my 3 quarter inch bushing. You see this is bigger. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Wait. I've done this all backwards. I did this all backwards. Crap. I should have used the big bushing on the near one and the small bushing. Even if you know what you're doing, this is, uh, damn it. Okay, so router bit, small bushing. Imagine that's centered. The router bit, big bushing pretend it's centered. So remember on that template, we want to cut the same distance across. So the idea is with this big one, we're gonna cut. So if this is my template, I wanna cut on this side here, because if this is my template, I wanna cut here, because this is the same distance as this. 
But what I did, like an idiot, for an even bigger distance. So this is what I was setting myself on the path to do. Okay, so it's not entirely a bad thing that I made that mistake because I was also doing my math wrong because I haven't done this in like three years. So the rule isn't double the bushing size. The rule is the difference between the bushings has to be double the size of the bit. Okay, so with the three eighths um, bushing, the center line is three sixteenths away. With the five eighths inch bushing, it's five sixteenths away, you know, half the diameter to the center point. So five eighths center line is five sixteenths. Now I've got a eighth inch bit. So from the center line to either side of the cutting edge is one sixteenth. On my narrow one, I'm gonna add one sixteenth from the center line to the cutting edge. So three sixteenths plus one sixteenth equals one quarter. Here, because I'm going on the far side, you know, the distance to the center line, I'm going to minus a sixteenth. So five sixteenths minus a sixteenth equals four sixteenths or one quarter. So That's nice. It's gonna look good. So this is the configuration the template was in. It looks close enough. I'm just gonna flip this over for the mirror image. I'm gonna knock out this side off camera because you already get how it goes and uh, hopefully less mistakes this time. Okay, other side came together okay. I got this marked out for my dominoes. Um, so as I mentioned, these are uh, a little warped. I could have kept milling, but because of the amount of warp, the would ended up a lot thinner than I wanted it to. So we're just going to try to pull that out in the glue up. see that's a larger mortise than the one below it and that's so when I put these together I have some slop here to help them come together because if these were both tight any misalignment on any of them was, would cause a problem which is one of the reasons I prefer using the domino over say dowels which dowels do work but you have to nail the alignment biscuits um, don't have that issue because they also have slop kind of like the mortise here does camera I noticed I had a little bowing so I added these calls and then I end up turning it so I could close my garage door it's had a day so it's Sunday now which is why I'm in my uh, rock of my street clothes today so time to get this unglued or unclamped hopefully glue don't come apart and add some penetrating epoxy and stuff and start filling some of the voids so that stuff can cure so this week I can uh, work on getting that together Happy to be over that part. Was really stressed about those curved glue ups, but they came together really good. Happy with it. Next video, we'll be working on the base. I want to say thank you to Bessie for providing the clamps and sponsoring this video in the big build off. And I hope you learned something, were inspired, or at least entertained. And until next time, make time to make something.